Hi, grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horeb Lutheran Church. Each day, Pastor Joanna Gregg and I uh, dwell with you in the Word and share in God's Word with us. Pastor Joanna is away and uh, grateful that she can take some time off with her family. So I want to be bringing um, the devotions each day this week. Today is uh, July 13th. It is a Monday, and I hope you had a, a good weekend. Um, but today we're going to look at Psalm 92. So hear this word. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord, your thoughts are very deep. The dullard cannot know. The stupid cannot understand this. Though the wicked sprout like grass and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, on high are on high forever. For your enemies, O Lord, for your enemies shall per perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you've exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. You poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have been have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree. They grow like the cedar in Lebanon. They're planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They're always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He's my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Here is the reading. So as you dwell on this and think about um, what jumps out at you and what questions might this raise or what nudge might you feel from God as you hear this word today in your life. When I, when I dwell on this, the first thing that jumped out was the first line. It's good to give thanks. It is good to give thanks. I've seen uh, recently over the last months and even years, people write down uh, thoughts of gratitude, three things I'm grateful for today, and, and it's a positive way to remind yourself that you might be more blessed than you think you are. Uh, but this is what the basis of this psalm is. And it reminded me of um, something that Paul had said in the letter to the Philippians in the fourth uh, chapter, I think it was, where it talks about, uh, by everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your thoughts be known to God, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and your mind. Uh, even Paul talked about how when we share with God, um, it's that peace that we receive, and so there's this connection with creator and creation. Um, to dwell on this particular passage today, perhaps even read it again. So we use the Christ in our home uh, booklet to help us with each of the daily readings so we don't just make these up but we just try, try to follow their particular scripture daily reading and in the booklet for today um, it focuses on uh, the practices that are essential for life what are essential practices for you in your faith life you know recently we've heard the phrase essential workers or essential businesses but how about essential practices for you as a person the story in the book was told about a child that was going to a dentist and was learning about the need to brush your teeth regularly. And the child responds, you mean I have to brush my teeth every day? And the dentist replied, a little tongue in cheek, well, only the ones you want to keep. So that's an interesting way of thinking about it. Can you think of some things that fit that phrase? You know, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Um, it applies to many things, perhaps even like teeth, if you don't uh, take care of it they may fall out or get diseased or whatever. But it also applies to things like muscles or a newly acquired language. I hear that all the time, that if you learn a language but don't practice it, you're going to lose it. Even a health that you have or a healthy diet, if you don't continue to exercise or continue to eat right, um, you'll be less healthy as time goes on. Relationships, um, especially the distance of, uh, or the strain of long distance relationships. If you're not able to practice friendship or relationship each day, it's harder to keep. But what about prayer and what about faith? One practice that has proven helpful is giving thanks to God for the abundant blessings that God bestows on us. And this is what the psalmist reminds us of. Um, 
We know the story, the gospel story. Jesus came into the life that we would have it, that we would have it abundantly, saying that I am the way and the truth and the life. And he shared, <clears throat> when asked what's the greatest commandment, he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. So you needed to love yourself, but also then love your neighbor like you love yourself. Um, and he also shared how, hey, you disciples, when you go out there, you know, they're going to know that you're my disciples because of your love, your compassion that you have for this world. So compassion and kindness was the kind of love that would be needed for this life of faith. That love is the essential. Uh, it's the, the mode of transaction that we have as people of God to do the things that are done in this world. Years ago, I was, uh, I was really excited to read a book by Michael Foss, uh, a Lutheran pastor. It's called Power Surge, and he had taken some time off and surveyed some churches just to kind of see what makes them tick. And he looked at healthy churches, and he looked at unhealthy ones. But he noticed a pattern, he said, and so he found out that um, he came up with six kind of areas. He called them six marks of discipleship, where these healthy churches that had healthy people, they were just couple of things that seem to keep popping up. Um, and in other words, these congregations and the people in them seem to be at a place of health. And it was exhibited in at least these six ways. And one was weekly worship. The other was um, they read their word daily. They dwelled in the word like we're doing. They prayed regularly over many things. They had spiritual friendships where they would check in with one another and held each other accountable and also wrestled and prayed with things that they dealt with in their lives. They were people who served others, um, and they were people who gave. They gave financially to support their churches. They wanted their churches to be healthy, but they also lived their lives in a way that they gave of themselves, not only to the ministries of the church, but in their jobs and their communities. They were givers, not takers. Um, so those were ways that they were healthy, and kind of like brushing your teeth every day. These people and these churches exhibited essential practices for healthy faith. Today, uh, the psalmist I heard say, it's good to give thanks to the Lord. And why? He talks about steadfast love, your faithfulness, O oh God, uh, for the music we have, for the melody that we have, and for your work in the world that we get to appreciate and, and experience. And as I was uh, reading that scripture again, uh, the hymn, uh, it's one of our, I think in our ELW worship book, 733, great is thy faithfulness, uh, uses the word thy a lot, but you know, just means your, um, but it's an interesting, uh, beautiful hymn to think about as we close out today. It goes like this, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. And thou, as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. As you read this song, as you dwell in God's word and talk about giving thanks to God, may you do so today and may you experience that sense of peace that God provides that guards your heart and your mind. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, for the gift of life and opportunities we have to walk with you wherever we are and wherever we go. So help us to begin today with grateful and thankful hearts for all that you provide. And in so doing, let that peace that you provide pervade in our hearts and our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, good to be with you. God's peace. Have a great day.